So as you know, I sent out the complaint uh, in the new case filed by the United States at a bunch of states against Google this morning. Uh, and I assume that there will be some interest in talking about this in class. Uh, and that's good. And I, but at the same time, I want to do two things. I want to talk about it. Uh, but we've got other stuff to cover. Um, and so um, I thought to maybe facilitate that. I would put together a, a pre-class video uh, on the complaint so we can at least have that sort of commonplace if we want that uh, so that we can then talk in class and, and, and not to go too, too long on this. So we should talk about it some. Um, and obviously, as you get, um, I'm, I'm filming on the day of the complaint. I've read it once. thought about these issues a fair amount, but um, uh, this is going to go on for a while, and I'm sure I'm going to learn a bunch of stuff, uh, and who knows what my views will be by the end. Uh, in any event, uh, uh, the DOJ um, held a press conference, uh, issues a press release uh, about the uh, monopolist Google. I don't think that's their official name. Maybe it will be. We'll see. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, this complaint is, is, uh, you know, it's two weeks from the election. Um, so who knows whether there will be a turnover in the White House or not. Um, you know, the IBM case in 1969 was brought at the very end of the Johnson administration. It's not unusual for, uh, uh, uh an antitrust division to, uh, want to clean up things if they think they may be losing control. Um, uh, and so, and then there's a political overlay here that I, I don't think I know a lot about, uh, and I'm not going to spend too much time on. Um, they situate this case, uh, in the, in the, you know, historic tech space that DOJ has operated in. That's really the AT&T case in 1974 that eventually led to the consensual agreed breakup of AT&T in 1982, really implemented in 84. So a decade is the relevant time frame there. <clears throat> and that's in an agreed case, uh, at least eventually agreed after a, a years of litigation. Microsoft in 98, um, uh, there was a brief thought that there was gonna be a breakup and then that got, that got killed off. So um, in that case took a little while. So, um, uh, and, and if you look to Europe, uh, Europe's been chasing Google for at least a decade. Three different, as it were, successful actions. Lots of euros flowing from Google to them. Um, various remedies still at various stages with not, in, at least in my view, a lot of change in competition on the ground. Um, so so this case is, is a big deal. There's no question about that. Um, uh, brought by the government, and then I gather, if you count, I haven't counted, 11 attorney generals. I gather all Republican attorney generals. Um, uh, I gather there are Democrat attorney generals out there thinking about a broader case. I'll say one of them is uh, uh, Phil Weiser at Colorado, who's a, we are antitrust case book co-authors, but I know nothing about what's going on um, in, in his world. So, um, uh, but I just flagged that. Uh, you know, you start the complaint, you want to tell a story. Uh, and the story here is, you know, a story of a scrappy upstart. And by the end, there's sort of this bloated empire. That's just one paragraph, but that's what happens here. So Google, uh, Bryn Page, uh, Stanford, uh, Computer Science, uh, a, a paper uh, that they gave in Australia, Brisbane, I think in 1998. Um, they had a better idea. They certainly weren't the first search engine. AltaVista, Lycos, Excite, Overture, and others. Google, uh, you know, whether Google goes off the rail and pursues a darker path here, well, we'll have that conversation. Uh, but, but certainly uh, where Google starts is, 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 a, is an invention that succeeds. Um, uh, and that's um, a success story. We should make sure we see that. Um, what's the case about? The heart of this case is about distribution. How do search engines get distributed? Um, and so, um, and we're gonna look at what that means on mobile, what that means on computers, uh, what that means on the edge, uh, which is, um, you know, smart speakers and voice assistants and the like. Um, but that's what the case is about. Um, it's, so it's a distribution case. Um, who gets to determine how things get distributed? 
Um, the search engine market, the DOJ complaint lays out some of the facts associated with it. Um, there aren't that many search engines as we'll see. And uh, there could be a couple of reasons for that. Certainly one of them is it seems to be very, very expensive to build a general search engine. They say billions of dollars and upfront investment, hundreds of millions of dollars ongoing. That seems like that's going to be a small end situation, even if competition is working in the most natural way possible. Uh, and it turns out, of course, that we have, well, I don't know how you count them, read the complaint, four search engines, two and a half. Four in the sense that you've got Google, Bing, DuckDuckGo, and Yahoo. Two and a half in the sense that only Google and Bing are full-fledged index the web, scour the web, look at everything uh, search engines, that DuckDuckGo doesn't really do that and Yahoo doesn't do that at all. Again, whether that's shaped by Google's behavior is part of what the complaint presumably will, uh, part of what the, the litigation will eventually get at. Um, but uh, so far, this seems like a small end situation. All right. So Google's situated in a two-sided market. We have consumers, users, you and me on one side. We have advertisers on the other side. We're going to need to worry about effects on both sides of the market here. Um, and, and they lay out this early theory in the complaint of, as you see here, the consumer purchase funnel. Uh, and the idea there is, is that when we think about advertising, uh, not all advertising are good substitutes for each other. And it depends a little bit on where the consumer is um, in, in making his or her purchase. Um, and you do some brand awareness, general awareness advertising, uh, and maybe some intermediate advertising, and boy, at the point of purchase, and that those aren't all good substitutes for each other. Um, uh, the UK uh, Competition and Markets Authority issued a report um, in July of this year. Uh, they go through this as well. Maybe put this a, a parallel picture in and, and say exactly the same thing. So part of what, on the advertising side, this case is going to be about is how we define the advertising markets. I want to say I think ultimately that's mainly an empirical question that I don't think I'm the person to assess, so I'm not going to do too much of that um, in this discussion. As to distribution, on the mobile side, and, and the complaint makes clear that what we know, which is you know the desktop is, is, is you know, I don't want to say withering, but certainly in terms of the overall share of search withering as, as mobile has exploded, as smartphones have taken off. And of course, that really means, as we know, um, Apple and Android. Um, and so those are the key paths here. These statistics are pretty interesting here. Uh, so look what they say. Apple iOS devices in the United States account for roughly 60% of mobile device usage. Uh, Apple is, is, if you've been paying attention, as you know, is in its own um, antitrust litigation with Epic right now. Um, and so understanding what Apple's position is will be interesting. Um, and then Android, they say, is the other 40%. Those are not the worldwide figures, but uh, DOJ lives in the United States. Um, so those are the paths for distribution through Apple which Apple controls, closed ecosystem, that's what they say, that's clearly right. And then obviously Android, which is an open source project, but really controlled by Google, at least as to the important issues. Um, the computer is really about the browser, uh, and you see the market share is there, the great success of Chrome, there may be some of that shaped by the behavior in this case. Uh, we'll get there in a little bit. And again, the heart of this is, is Google has entered into a series of distribution agreements um, with Apple uh, and then with device manufacturers and then with you know, telephone, mobile operators, uh, uh, with, with um, other browsers, all in efforts to get their search engine out and about. Um, uh, they've been very successful in that. Uh, and DOJ characterizes those as exclusionary distribution agreements. This is... Uh, is we'll see at the bottom, this is ultimately a Section 2 case. There are three counts. They're all situated in Section 2. There are no Section 1 claims. There are no tying claims. It's interesting how they frame the case, and obviously they can amend the complaint if they want to at some point. Um, but it's, it's strictly a Section 2 case as they framed it, Google's actions. Okay. Um, uh, and then they define some markets. Um, general search services. Um, maybe Google, Google will fight about that. Um, their market share in there is, is awesome. Uh, look where they are on mobile at 94. Look where they are on the desktop, 82. 
The difference between those two is, is obviously that Bing is at 2% on mobile and is at 12% on the desktop. I assume that's driven by the fact that uh, Microsoft has no meaningful position in mobile uh, and still has, I think this figure was 14 to 15% of the browser market uh, between Internet Explorer and Edge, and I assume that's what accounts for Bing at being at 12%. It does show you one of the things that we're going to talk about here is how default settings matter. Um, I take it those people are using Bing because it came with their computers uh, through, through getting Edge or, or, or getting Explorer. But Google's position there is um, e enormous in both markets. Um, we'll see if they spend a lot of time disputing whether or not they have uh, a market power, monopoly power. Um, uh, Microsoft did a little of that in the 1998 case. A little, the incentive to do that depends a little bit on how the actual trial is structured. The Microsoft trial, they limited the number of witnesses, so I would not have invested witnesses into uh, market share. Uh, what Google will do here depends a little bit on, uh, on how the trials are going to be structured. We have no, know nothing about that. Okay, and then the complaint sets out two closely related but slightly different advertising markets uh, related to search. Uh, and again, I'm not going to say too, too much about those. All right, let's talk about the anti-competitive conduct. So the alleged, and all of these are allegations, the alleged anti-competitive conduct relates to these exclusionary distribution agreements. And I think the Apple case is the one that, you know, there are two that I think really matter here, uh, though I'll, I'll flesh out the rest of it, but, but the Apple deal and then how we should think about Android. Um, uh, if you haven't seen the facts of the Apple deal, they're pretty amazing. Um, so Google pays Apple, you see a figure here quoted of eight to $12 billion for preferential distribution on iOS and then I guess Mac OS X ultimately as well. Occasionally there are these discussions um, that, uh, oh, defaults don't matter. Uh, you can switch in a heartbeat, uh, download, download, switch, flip. The behavior of the most sophisticated parties in the market, Apple and Google, suggests absolutely otherwise. If defaults didn't matter, Google wouldn't be handing Apple $10 billion a year. They just wouldn't do that. Uh, they've got other things to do with that money. So I've never found, I've never find the contention that defaults don't matter the slightest bit interesting, I guess I want to say. Uh, their behavior suggests otherwise. That said, <laughs> we need to take a couple of steps back. So, look, Apple, Apple is, as I say here, Apple's not a common carrier, right? There's obviously a discussion about to what extent we ought to, to you know, stop looking at these firms through an antitrust lens and look at them through sort of a regulatory utility network industry type lens, and we can absolutely do that. Not an antitrust, I don't think. Um, we would do that through regulation of the sort that the House Majority Subcommittee Antitrust Report suggests. But right now, Apple's not a common carrier. Apple doesn't have any obligation to have a search engine on, on its devices. Uh, it could have 12, it could have one, it could have three. It gets to choose that, I think. I, I don't think there's any contention that that's not right. And Apple's obviously in a great position. Um, and so if Apple auctioned off the exclusive position to be you know, the default search engine, I'm, I'm not sure that that raises antitrust issues. Um, and so when, when that's sort of what seems to happen here, that Apple says, we've got a default position, how much will you pay us? And Google turns out to say eight to $12 billion. It's clear that, that you know, Bing, DuckDuckGo, and, and, and uh, Yahoo, they're gonna lose that auction, as it were. Uh, and that's competition on the merits. Um, so, so, so I, 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 I'm, you know, I, I think you have to see that, 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 that way. And part of what we're going to have to separate in this case is, is what is competition on the merits versus what is otherwise anti-competitive? Certainly not clear to me that this is anti-competitive in any way, shape, or form. Uh, obviously, Apple's done incredibly well. The complaint said that earlier. Now, I do think there's a, you know, a question here. Um, and that question here is, is why is Google paying so much money to Apple? If we assume that Bing is the next best bidder here, 
and that, as, as, as the DOJ complaint says, in other words, because of a long time deprivation of scale, no other search engine can offer Apple very much. Yeah, that's right. The other search engines are not in a very good posture. And that would mean in this hypothetical auction I'm describing, you would think Google would win. You know, they'd beat Bing, but they wouldn't be paying the kind of money they're paying. So why are they paying so much money? And I, w I don't know. Is, I would say there's a story here, but the natural entrant into this market, given what the DOJ says about the importance of scale, is Apple. Now, the tricky part of that is, is that Apple, you know, part of their powerful brand is protecting privacy. So then the question is, could they be DuckDuckGo uh, in running a privacy-protecting search engine? Maybe. Uh, and the fact that they're not is interesting. So is Apple, as it were, being, you know, is, is the threat, the potential threat of Apple entry part of what's inducing these higher payments? Uh, I don't, uh, there's, I don't know anything about that. But I think the size of the payments is, is remarkable given the weakness of Google's competitors. I guess I'd want to understand that. Okay, Android. So um, when Google launched Android, there were three business models competing in the smartphone world. You had the highly vertically integrated, pretty expensive Apple version. Uh, you had Microsoft, and they were trying to do what they always do. They sell software to, to device makers, and Microsoft was trying to do that. And Google entered with a different model. Um, they were going to give away the software, give away Android. And they were going to make money elsewhere by bringing other software with that. And that starts out as Search and Chrome that evolves into Google Play. Um, <clears throat> but it was a it was a different model, um, and we know that at the end of the day, <laughs> the one model that failed was the Microsoft model, and that consumers seem to like either the Apple model, <coughs> excuse me, or the Android model. Um, Europe didn't see it that way, um, so one of the actions brought against Google was against Google Android. <coughs> excuse me, and I talk about that. Um, in a blog post from a couple years ago and lay out this competition theory. The agreements we're seeing in the DOJ case is sort of like, you know, Europe, European deja vu. Oh, I like that. Uh, that's good. Uh, yeah, uh, that's what we're seeing here. Uh, so been there, done that, seen this before. That's not to say it's wrong, uh, but it's interesting in some sense how old the complaint feels. Uh, Europe's done this already, though not hasn't accomplished very much. Now, as I tried to suggest there, um, uh, DOJ here points again to substantial payments being made by Google for distribution. Again, payments for distribution sound like people competing for distribution. Um, and, and I'm not sure exactly what the Department of Justice's theory of sort of distribution competition looks like. That is, I think, the the thing, the issue that runs through the case um, in, 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 sort of a, in sort of a big way. Now, this is not to say um, that, that I don't see things that Google has done that I go, mm, I don't know that I would have done that. Um, so there's some discussion that Google has what's called an anti-forking clause. Um, so if you're a handset maker um, and you take Google's version of Android, you can't also, I think in the hardest version of it, um, uh, you know, support, uh, build devices for an alternative version of Android, so-called Android Fork. Amazon had one of those. People tell a story about why that's useful for avoiding fragmentation. What an antitrust person calls fragmentation is competition, I think. Um, so um, I've struggled to understand why those clauses are pro-competitive. Um, and then there's another clause here where Google seems to make it very, very expensive to switch by sort of bundling together over time some of their payments, and you sort of forfeit payments if you exit on the installed base of devices that you've already sold. Again, I'm not seeing why that kind of agreement is pro-competitive. So I see issues here. I think there will be a question as to how important those, those clauses are. Um, and I do think the bigger picture, uh, which is... Um, uh, Google came with a different model for Android for smartphone, mobile smartphone operating systems uh, and bringing it as a two-sided payments model where advertising was going to support the underlying software. Again, the market seems to have said that was a really good model. Um, and it's made possible, uh, you know, uh, Android phones at different price points than we see 
uh, for Apple phones. Um, Google also on the desktop has done lots of browser deals according to the complaint. Again, those browser deals look like competition uh, in a competitive market. Rivals could compete to be the preset default general search engine on a browser. I suspect they did. They just lost. So I don't know how you separate that. And yes, you can say that Google, because it's you know, got these scale advantages, it's hard for these other search engines to compete. That's true. Uh, but that flows in some sense from the, the great advantage Google got by building, you know, I think it's fair to say, the great first successful search engine. Uh, and then there's a discussion of, you know, the future. Uh, the future is our smart speakers, um, uh, Siri and Alexa and Cortana or whatever the Microsoft version is. Um, I thought what was interesting there is, is, is a discussion of what the complaint calls concurrency, which is the idea that you could have a device that you could, you know, if you said Alexa, it would respond. And if you said Siri, it would respond. And it could do both of those, that it could, as it were, speak two different languages. It could speak both the Apple language and the Amazon language simultaneously. And that's, that's what concurrency would look like. And there's a suggestion that Google is foreclosing that kind of concurrency. Um, I've talked about that idea a little bit before. I think there's a sense that we think of like the default search engine on the iPhone. Well, it has to be the same each time you run a search. No, it doesn't. These are smart devices. You could set up an algorithm. I think they put those in these machines where, you know, 10% of the time it's Google and 20% of the time it's DuckDuckGo and, right, you could, you could do all of that. Um, it's not to say that Apple, again, Apple's not a common carrier. It's not to say that Apple needs to do that. Uh, but there are ways of achieving concurrencies in, in these markets. Um, and whether we'll see that outside of antitrust as a remedy in these spaces, I think, is, is interesting. All right. So what's the problem? What's Google done? Um, foreclosed, you know, distribution. Uh, sort of a vague general description of harms to consumers. You know, this is one of these sentences that, you know, you've got in, in a macro on your antitrust complaint writing thing and you hit that, that puts that in. So that doesn't tell us a lot there, I don't think. That's fairly generic. The same thing on the advertising side, on innovation and the like. That's not to say those are wrong. It's just to say you read the complaint and you move on. We're going to have to see the evidence on that. The one thing that I thought was interesting, um, uh, there's been this contention of self-preferencing, and that in some sense was one of the animating ideas behind the original investigations of Google by the FTC and in the European Commission. And that really gets very little play in this, shows up very late. Again, I think that's partially because we don't have great theories here. Um, uh, there is a sense that Google has put more advertising and is pushing organic blue links down the page. Um, if they're a legitimate monopolist, that's how they charge a higher price. That's what legitimate monopolists are allowed to do in the United States, see link line. Um, so I think that's why that figures uh, uh, very little in, in the DOJ complaint. Uh, the the um, actual uh, counts are pretty uh, perfunctory. Monopoly maintenance and search, uh, monopoly maintenance and search advertising, and monopoly maintenance in general set search text advertising. Again, no Section 1 uh, uh, causes of action, no tying. Uh, you might have thought you would have seen that, and that's not what you see. And then the relief, um, uh, you know, find them to be bad people. Structural relief, what does that mean? Do we break up Google? There was heading into this some discussion of Chrome being... Uh, hived off from Google um, and bar them from engaging in these anti-competitive practices. That's the complaint. Um, I, I realize that um, we will want to talk in class about a bottom line. That's what everyone always wants. Uh, I hope you've gotten this far. Um, so I don't think this is an easy case to win. Certainly the press accounts were um, that, that there was some nervousness in the antitrust professionals in DOJ about this case. You know, I, I never know what to make of that. Uh, they know they're going to have to litigate this case down the road if that's actually what happens here, if, you know, this continues. Who knows if Biden wins, whether a different path would be taken. So I don't think it's an easy case to win. I said what I said about the Google-Apple deal. I think Apple gets to sell that distribution space. Um, and 
man, uh, it's hard to see how someone other than Google wins that space, especially given where Google started. And I think Google's starting point has to be seen as a legitimate starting point, I think. Um, um, and I say, you know, I don't quite understand why Apple's getting so much money here, and I'd love to understand that better. Uh, but I'm really skeptical that we're going to force Apple to build a search engine. Um, we, just, we just don't really do that. Um, on the Android side, um, as I tried to suggest earlier, um, I think Android's a success story in the sense of um, uh, uh, building a new product um, in the face of competition. Um, uh, even the European Union case uh, sees that. It's at the point where the Google Play Store achieves dominance that they think Google should have done something different. They certainly see the period of, 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 of uh, legitimate competition there. Um, I do think there are some clauses here that I find uh, concerning. Uh, I just can't tell how important they are. Uh, and then the browser competition looks like just competition on the merits, um, where again, these other search engines are not in a good posture there. Uh, this case is going to need a lot of evidence, and I don't have any of that. Uh, and then this ultimate question is, is if it takes billions and billions of dollars to build a new search engine, what is the remedy uh, that would uh, uh, take place here to do that? All right, I'm going to stop there. Um, we'll talk about this in class. Uh, I hope that gives us sort of a common base of information so we can have a, a good, quick discussion. See ya.